Before we get into the many ways in which you can use biochar on your farm, let's first explain what it is and why it's such a valuable asset to your soil. The answer lies in the name. Bio means living matter, and char, well, that's just short for charcoal. And biochar isn't even a new concept. It's the main reason why the Amazon rainforest has such incredibly rich soil. Yep, all that black gold was made by man thousands of years ago, and it's mostly because of char. You see, even back then, the ancients knew that char was this magical, absorbent thing that held onto nutrients and moisture like nothing else could. So they spread it as far and wide as they could, eventually forming the thousands of square kilometers of rainforest that we see today. When you burn organic matter under controlled conditions, where oxygen is at a premium, you're left with black, brittle chunks that we call char. Char is essentially pure carbon, and as we know, carbon is the building block of life. Now char, on its own, has more aerated spaces between all of those fine flecks of carbon than it has solid matter. This means that there's plenty of room available for other goodies that your plants need to grow. The carbon is just going to keep it in place, and on a large scale, when it's a part of your soil, it's going to keep nutrients from running off with the rain, and it's the best and most effective way to avoid and even reverse erosion. All that carbon gives off a slight electrical charge, just enough to draw other materials toward it. Both mineral and organic matter in the soil will find their way into those pockets. But as is, just after burning, it's still just empty carbon, and you need to fill all that empty space with some nutrition. In essence, biochar is what keeps it all intact. Minerals, nutrients, moisture, microorganisms, and whatever roots are feeding on the food it holds. Meaning that anything you plant in that soil will have plenty of stored nutrients and fluid to work with for future use. And all the microorganisms that were in that soil originally will happily work a way to spread all of that good stuff as far and wide as they can. And with all of the compost and manure you add to it, those little creatures will multiply faster than any other method available to you. With all of the nutrients and microorganisms, your bland char has suddenly gotten a makeover. Now you've got yourself biochar, a soil that's been proven time and time again to hold nutrients and moisture better than any peat moss or compost can. And it's got the ability to make permanent changes to your soil. Just look at how long the Amazon's been around. It won't just show improvements now. It'll keep advancing your soil's condition over time without any input from you at all. It's a little perplexing why people aren't making more use of this. We've been seeing the devastating effects of our poor soil management in recent times. The ground just isn't holding on to nutrients like it should anymore. And with the increasing number of farms being irreparably damaged by erosion, you'd think that we'd be jumping at this very cheap and feasible fix. We already have so much waste that we don't even know what to do with it all. And it's not just for farmland. Burning organic matter in an oxygen-starved environment can create combustible gases and kerosene oil, too. These byproducts make biochar a very profitable and much-needed source of fuel in many industries and for household uses. It's cheap, easy, and creates less pollution than any other means we have available to us at this time. But the wide scope of biochar is a whole video for another day. For now, we'd like to look at how you can make it yourself and how to use it in your soil. Your farm, homestead, and even just your backyard will have plenty of organic matter for you to get started. The aim with biochar isn't just to throw a bunch of stuff into a pile and have yourself a good old bonfire. No, no, you want to achieve pyrolysis. And to do that, you'll need to burn your organic matter with as little oxygen as possible, or else you'll just end up with a pile of ash that's of no use to you. This is even easier to achieve than you think. As long as the fire is burning inside something, you'll have just enough oxygen for it to burn and even smolder long enough to turn everything into char. A shallow pit or a steel drum is going to work perfectly well. If you're working in the ground, which is probably going to be the easiest and most cost-effective way to go, even if it is a little more labor-intensive in the long run, you only need about 15 inches of depth. That will be more than enough to force air out instead of keeping it in. Once everything is down to a smolder and the flames are gone, douse it with water before it turns into ash, leaving you with the brittle black shape of whatever it was you burned. You can use the backyard grill just as well as a trench if you're working with smaller amounts at a time. Now, remember that char and ash are two very different things. Ash is a powder that happens as a result of combustion, meaning that the carbon itself was reduced to ash, whereas char underwent heat decomposition, leaving the carbon intact. Grasses and twigs won't do the job. You need something with girth and weight to it. If it's too fine, it'll turn into ash almost as soon as you've ignited it. 
logs, branches, and even old pallets are what you need. The second option is to use the two-barrel system. It's still pretty cost-effective, especially if you can use recycled drums, but it's much less labor-intensive in the long run. How it works is you take the larger of your two drums, drill four to six holes along the side, down at the bottom, about the circumference of a tin can each, and throw some metal hinges at the bottom. This will give your second, smaller drum a few inches of room when you place it inside the larger drum. Those extra inches allow just enough airflow to keep the fire burning without saturating it with oxygen from all sides. The smaller drum gets a few smaller holes right on its underside. This serves two purposes. It allows that necessary controlled air to come through, and it makes it easier to shake ash out of the drum, leaving just the char you want behind. So essentially, your inside barrel is your burn barrel, and the outside drum is going to allow air in, and it'll keep the heat inside too. You're then going to use the bigger barrel's original lid and construct a chimney on top of it to allow all the gases to escape without losing all that precious heat. Throw your logs, branches, and whatnot inside, light it, and walk away. It'll have burned out by the next morning without the need to douse the flames like you'd need to if you were making use of trenches in the ground. The barrel system is our personal favorite. Sure, you'll need to find the barrels and make the necessary holes, but it'll serve you for years to come, and it'll require the least amount of effort on your part in the long term. There's no risk of a spark being blown away to land on a dry bush or to light a house on fire, and it's by far the cleanest way, from an environmental standpoint, to do it. It's not going to come out like charcoal. That's hard and solid. It's more like a very shiny, black chunk of brittle honeycomb. There are plenty of other ways to get your char, but they're all going to mimic the basic idea of these two systems anyway. So, depending on what's feasible for you, choose whichever way makes the most sense for your property. Now that you have all those black hunks of pure aerated carbon, after they've cooled off, obviously, you'll need to crush it. This stuff is so brittle that you can do it by hand, or just pound it fine with the end of a log right inside the barrel you burned it in. The point isn't to chuck tons of stuff into your garden beds. That'll just give you tons of empty carbon without any nutrients in it. Biochar acts like a sponge, so throwing in your garden beds will just leach out all the compost you've been putting into them. When you add biochar to soil, it needs to be filled with all the good stuff already, and it'll hold on to it in the long term, feeding your soil instead of depleting it. Once you've crushed it into quarter-inch chunks, or even smaller, give it a good soak and dump it straight onto your compost pile. As the compost spends a few months breaking down, the char will absorb all that good stuff and some additional moisture from your hose and the rain creating a rich, dark, and moist soil without any help from you. Or you can use it to layer out your pens and coops. This is probably the most practical way to use biochar. It'll create a clean, dry barrier for your animals while absorbing all the nutrients from their manure and the inevitable water waste that they'll create. Your chickens will even like pecking at it. Don't worry, it's perfectly safe for animals to consume. When the time comes to clean out the coop, the contents can be worked right into your field or the garden as it is. If you're working with larger livestock, that has manure that takes a little longer to break down. Just add it to the pile to get to work before the next cleaning comes around. A good rule of thumb is to wait at least two months for organic matter to break down enough for the char to absorb it. So not that much different from a regular compost pile, and the maintenance doesn't change either. Now, you can use composting tea and worm tea, but in all honesty, it'll be much easier to just let it do its thing on the compost pile for a few months. Regardless, Whatever you throw at your char, it'll absorb all the goodness like a sponge, keeping the optimal amount of food for your growing plants inside its pores. The difference between biochar fields and traditional fields is just jaw-dropping. The results speak for themselves. There's no reason that you shouldn't be utilizing a cost-effective, eco-friendly, and quite frankly superior way to not only fertilize your soil, but to make it last for years for you. It won't just serve you longer. It can turn previously destroyed and eroded soil completely around. Just look at the Amazon. It's been almost 3,000 years, and the place is still holding on to all that dark gold to this day. Start today. There's no money or risk involved, so what have you got to lose? If biochar was able to turn dry bushveld into a lush jungle that's lasted for thousands of years, can you imagine what it can do for our gardens and the very real and very serious problem that our large-scale farms are dealing with? Or have you already been experimenting with biochar on your property? You know how much we love hearing from our audience, so please don't hesitate to let us know in the comments below. Every comment, like, and share keeps the lights on over here, allowing us to keep bringing you all of the new advancements and discoveries that are just waiting to be implemented on your property. 
Until next time, keep growing, keep learning, and bask in the fruits of your labor. Cheers!